All right, so if Sleepaway Camp 2 Unhappy Campers was a breath of fresh air for an already amazing first film, Sleepaway Camp 3 Teenage Wasteland is just another slasher. I I I don't hate this movie, but man, this really even Pamela Springsteen in this one really didn't save it because this and Sleepaway Camp 2 were both made in six months back to back and I like like I like this one all right but it's just such a regular slasher that there's not much to go on with it the thing I loved about the second one even though Pamela Springsteen is great in both of these I love the fact that she was this quirky camp or camp counselor who literally like like she had such great jokes the way she was so humorously would slash somebody and then or say like a silly line before she slashes somebody that made that the second film so fresh and unique and Pamela Springsteen is fantastic in in that one and she's good in this one too but it just this one didn't capture the same fun for me because it just felt typical slasher and it makes sense in the story because Angela is not a counselor in this movie. She just takes in the identity of somebody else and comes to this Camp New Horizons, which is a new business owner, or new owner opens after she murdered everybody in the last movie a year ago, before this. So she's not a camp counselor. She's not as quirky, but it makes sense in the story that she's worn down and tired because she's annoyed with dealing with all these shitty people. And these people are more shitty to a point where it's just like, oh, I just want him to die immediately. And it just didn't it didn't have the same feel, appeal to me. So it's this one I'm not going to go too in depth with. There are things I'll talk about, but I'm not going to go into big depth like 2 and th or 1 and 2 are. Whenever I talked about them, I went into a giant a giant amount of depth with the first two movies. This one I'll mention things that I like or I think are really weird. Um I thought it was a cool way how Angela wormed her way back into into the camp. Um, in in New York, she runs over this girl who looks just like her, or she got a haircut to look just like this girl Maria. Um, and this Maria girl, before she dies, it, it opens up with her at her house, and she it starts with her just complaining with her parents, like screaming at them from upstairs, and they're like they're downstairs. And she's like, I'm going to go to camp, and I'm never going to come back. And, like, the acting is really bad and just really annoying with that girl at the beginning. And the girl, for some reason, I think it's supposed to be a self-aware, like, stupid joke because the girl, Maria, like, she has no shirt on, and she has some of the smallest breasts I've ever seen. And, it l and literally, she has it tattooed on each breast, two words... Milk shakes for breasts that literally are like the equivalent of a guy's breasts. Like it's not, it's nothing. It's literally non-existent. And I was just like, I I think that is supposed to be a joke. Like she ha she doesn't have any milkshakes, so why did it say milkshakes? But I but I just thought, man, that's just kind of dumb. Uh, okay, all right. That just it was it was too silly where it wasn't really that funny, um, and. Like, Angela runs her over and then, like, throws her in the trash compactor and, like, she takes off at the Camp New Horizons disc uh, pretending to be that girl Maria. Um, and then it's funny because she leaves the... in the vehicle... or in the uh, van with everybody. And then after it leaves, there's graffiti on the wall that just says, Angela is back! Like, like that was kind of funny, but it was like, why is that there? And a lot of the jokes in this movie, it's like, yeah, it's funny, but it seems like it's not trying as hard, like with a lot of the jokes. Um, it's called Camp New Horizons now, run by these two weird folks, like this weird couple, this weird, like, perky woman, and this, and her husband, who is this, this mini, this really small guy who, like, just, like, this weird-looking guy who all these beautiful girls are fawning over this old man who looks really weird and looks like the equivalent of Dopey from Snow White and the uh, Seven Dwarfs. 
like this guy isn't is a dopey looking person and all these girls are just like oh i want him like what like that's so stupid um so weird and i'll mention this too like how renee estevez was in this last movie we get tracy griffith melody griffith's sister in this movie i thought that was a cool connection to bring in even though melody griffith is not in these movies but uh just how like bruce springsteen or like emilio estevez weren't either but like i like the fact that it did the same thing where it's like sister of a famous actor or musician like that's that's funny that's cool that they brought tracy griffith in it and I would have liked her more if she had more screen time. She's not like Molly, where she didn't have enough time to really get a liking for her. Like, she's fine. She's totally fine. She's got this funny relationship with this other guy who they make it through to the end with. But it's it's not the same as Molly. Like, it's not... Like, she's likable, but there's not enough time with her to feel much for this final person who lives in the movie. Um, and... It just, I don't know, like, it's so, Angela just goes, kills everybody, says a couple jokes, but the jokes aren't as funny. Um, there's one really funny joke where I did kind of lose it, where whenever they first go into the cabin, or I mean into the, like, hall where all the tables are, and the weird woman who's running it, it says, like, does anybody know I'm a happy camper? And then Angela just goes, I do. <laughs> like, like, that was funny. That was a funny callback to the second one. Um, I, I like that connection to the second one, but it was just like, oh, it's reminding me of the second one being better um, than this one. But then then we get this other character, like Sean, who is in the... Like, in part two, the Sean character, his dad was a cop that got Angel arrested. And I think this is the same character. This is his dad, Barney. And I did like that connective tissue with the, with the Sean character to Barney in this movie because Barney is this cop who put Angela away. And I love the fact that they connected that to the second one. Like, that's a cool connection. And I like that Barney character. He was a badass character, and I knew he was there just to murder Angela. Like, he wanted to murder her, but of course he does, and of course he dies. Of course Angela makes it through. And they have this big, inevitable, like, confrontation at the end. And then he's, then he's like, how many have you killed this time? And then she says something silly. And then she shoots him. And that's the confrontation. Like, that that didn't last long at all. It's, that kind of sucked. That the confrontation of him doing that was gone. It just, it didn't fit that well. Barney kind of pushed out at the end because he just got shot. And that's it. Didn't He didn't even fight back. Just got shot. Um... And like I said, all these characters who are there just to die in this one are all incredibly unlikable. They're not very fun. They're just... It's like this group of uh, lower class and upper class. So like all these rich kids and all these uh, urban uh, urban people or redneck people, like they've all got these just groups of people that all are unlikable to each other because they're both opposites of what they're supposed to be on the quote-unquote like spectrum like they're just like there's the spoiled rich girl who calls the black guy an n-word for no reason or like there's the rich guy who talks to angela and just thinks that he's just gonna be able to get in her pants and says like oh you girls like you always want me like this way or you like you girls always your type always wants guys like me or something like he's just being douchey and i'm like Again, these characters just are are really just unlikable, and they don't, they're not unlikable in a way where they're fun. It's not like Allie or Judy, where like they, they're hilarious, but they're just, they're, but they're be bad characters. But this one, everybody's bad on, like completely bad, like to where Angela gets rid of them quick, but it's just like, there's nothing to grip onto. Um, I don't know. And then they have, like, there are some good kills in this. I'm going to give it that. There are some fun kills. That leader, that woman who runs the place, like, she gets a good kill. Like, her, like she's buried underground. And, like, Angela gets a freaking lawnmower, runs over her head with it. So, like, she dies by getting her head ran over with a lawnmower. And then there's, like, just a lot of random ones like that that are fun. But they just, they don't give the same impact, like one and two did 
Um, cause this is the point where it just felt like, oh, it's just another slasher. And Angela, the character is beaten and worn down and annoyed because she's not a counselor anymore. But like, that just makes the character not as fun. And, but I mean, Pamela Springsteen is still good in this movie. It's just, she's not the character, like where the character was in the last movie. She's not there now. And it's her character supposed to be annoyed like this, but it just didn't give her as much to do, which really made me sad. I I love her in the second one, and this one she's fine, but she's not as great or awesome in this in this one as the second one. And that's all I could say about Sleepaway Camp. It's literally just the same movie again, basically as the second one, without a lot of the charm, like with a lot of charm taken out, um, with Pamela Springsteen's character Angela not being as perky, like she's just more pissed off it doesn't give as much of a fun tone and I feel like it just the movie fell flat in a lot of ways but like I said there were things I liked and enjoyed about it um, but like it just it's just average it's just an average slasher it's not anything special um, not terrible but not amazing and that's it for the first three Sleepaway Camp movies and I have not seen Return to Sleepaway Camp yet which I hear is really terrible um, I, I will see it, but literally I don't know where I could find, unless I find the DVD out in the wild, um, I, like, I looked online on Amazon and the DVD was like 50 or 60 bucks, because I think it's out of print for Return to Sleepaway Camp, so I've got to go to some, like, movie place that I've got, that I go to to find it, and hopefully I'll find it, um, but... But man, I, I don't know when I'll get to talk about that one because, like I, like I said, I don't have it and don't really have a way to watch it. So whenever I get to that, I'll get to that and I'll eventually watch it. Whenever I do, I'll talk about it on here. But as for now, I have only seen the first three. Oh, and I'll mention the fourth one. And I've seen clips of the fourth one, the production footage on it. Sleepaway Camp for The Survivor, which... um. I guess I'm gonna spoil it. Like you, like if you've looked this up, it's obvious like what the movie is. But Sleepaway Camp for the Survivor was this production footage movie that was gonna be made. The only thing that was made was production footage of it, though. And this, um, this character who has amnesia and imagines the killings that Angela did. She keeps dreaming about Angela, but then in the end, it's just fucking Angela that's having these hallucinations. So. And that's what a movie was going to be, and honestly, I'm kind of glad we didn't get that, because that just sounds terrible, that it's just Angela the whole time, knowing that she's not Angela, and she's just having hallucinations. Like, that's really stupid. Um, so, Sleepaway Camp, for the Survivor, like, I've seen, like, the production footage, but I'm glad that wasn't a movie, so... And I wanted to, I wanted to talk about that one real quick, because even though it's not a movie, it does have footage for it, so... Yeah, the Sleepaway Camp franchise, the first two I love. The third one I think is okay, and Return I haven't seen. Um, so whenever I get to Return, I'll get to it. But for now, the first three films are totally fine. Like I said, love the first two. Third one's all right. It's watchable. Um, just not as watchable as the other two. So, yeah, I, I enjoy talking about the franchise. And when I get to Return, I will whenever I find it. Um, but next, franchise-wise, I want to talk about the, fran the Psycho franchise. Um, because on Killer Flicks, the theme this week is black and white. So, I'm of course going to exploit that and talk about the movie that everybody's going to talk about. So, yeah. Um, thanks for watching, guys. And uh, thanks, thanks for, again, thanks for watching.